to uh, in a way that we never thought we would when we had our last sitting in parliament on the 18th of March. But due to the invisible uh, disease that is attacking our country, we have to meet like it. I think as members, we have to be exemplary and um, not to be the ones who are moving around. Uh, we have to abide the regulations as presented by the National Command Council. These are the trying times, but I believe, as President has said so many a times when he is presenting to the nation, we shall uh, members. We have an agenda uh, which is very short, and the time is not the normal time that we usually use for our meeting. We will only be having this meeting strictly two hours. If we exceed two hours, the system is just going to click all of us off. So we have to respect the time. Uh, I'm handing over to you, Nola to present any apologies that we have. And uh, after that, uh, go through the agenda. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, from the Portfolio Committee's side, we've got two apologies. One of uh, the Honorable Matebula, who has a bereavement, whom we know we were informed a day before yesterday. I think it was yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, that he had lost his son. So our condolences go to his family. Um, the second apology that we have is that of Honorable Kopane, who is of ill, so she'll not be able to attend to this meeting today. Um, through you, Chairperson, I'd like to hand over to my colleague from the NCOP to see if there are any apologies that side. Supera, are there any apologies from the NCOP? Okay, seemingly not. Um, let me, Chairperson, I think we'll probably get there much later or as and when Supera comes to join back into the meeting. No, I'm in, no, I'm in. Are you in? Are there any apologies yes. from the NCOP? Yes, yes, we do have one apology from Honorable Aple, who is in the hospital. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, through you, Chairperson, I'll go through the agenda of today's meeting. Um, the Chairperson has already opened the meeting. Um, I've just, we've just alluded to the apologies. The reason why we have this meeting today is that um, the Portfolio Committee and the Select Committee will jointly receive a briefing from the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure regarding COVID-19 related issues. And one of those issues is the properties that are earmarked for, for use as quarantine sites during the COVID-19 period. Um, the other agenda item is the role of the EPWP beneficiaries during this period. And the third one is a burning issue that we have, that honorable members may have heard on, of on the, on the headlines and the media and social media as well, which is the Bay Bridge Fencing Project. So the department will be giving us um, those three presentations today. And as I said earlier, that members will definitely be given three minutes to ask at a later stage. But for now, I'll hand it back to you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Nola. Uh, I will hand over to Minister Dillon. Uh, Minister? Minister? I think the minister was here earlier on, uh, but in the event that the minister is not uh, responding, Deputy Minister. I think let's hand over to DJ. Because the minister and the deputy minister apparently are not responding. Good afternoon, uh, honorable chair, honorable members and colleagues. 
Am I audible? Okay. Yes, you are. You are audible. Yeah. Okay. But we can't then, see you. You can't see me. Yeah. No. I have put on the mask because I'm not alone. It's a requirement of the COVID. But you can see the, the face. Maybe it's, okay. it's, it's my it's my it's my iPad, but I can't see you. No, we but can see him. Must... Okay. Uh, no, thanks very much. Thanks very much. I really appreciate. It. We are going to start um, with uh, our presentation. We'll start with the one on uh, quarantine sites, and then uh, we'll take the the one on. Uh, uh, EPWP and then after the one on the Bay Bridge. Mr. Mavinja is going to take us through on the quarantine. Mr. Mavinja, your time is 10 minutes. You must stick to that 10 minutes to brief the portfolio committee and the select committee. You can take over, Mr. Mavinja. Um, good uh, afternoon, uh, the honorable chair, the honorable members. Um, the Minister, Deputy Minister of Public Works, and uh, the members of the House. I would be very quick uh, because I've got only 10 minutes to go through the presentation. But if you look, uh, if we all look at uh, the content page, we're trying to respond to all questions that which the, the portfolio committee raised to the Department of Public Works. I think we are covering uh, the background until the, the last part, which is uh, the challenges and interventions, yeah. including the progress update, that which we can uh, give to the committee uh, to date. The background, as we all know, that um, the public works has been activated by the regulations, uh, section five of the regulations uh, of the lockdown that the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure must identify and make available sites to be used as isolation, as well as quarantine facilities as the need arises. And that uh, responsibility has been actually extended as well to the member of the Executive Council responsible for public works in the province, as well as the accounting officers of the municipalities concerned. Um, the PTW, it's in, in terms of its responsibility, is the, it, it is represented in the public health and the infection and containment work stream, which is chaired by the Department of Health um, at the NAT joint. And then we all report in terms of that work stream to the NAT joint. And that is chaired by the presidents as well by the SECDEF. NAT joint also uh, reports to the National Cor Coronavirus Command Center. Uh, what we also want to quickly uh, do as kind of uh, the background as well is to just give uh, uh, the, the, the key responsibilities uh, that are based on uh, what we do as a department, including the uh, Department of Health. That is the identification of sites. That is all public works responsibility, whether it identifies sites from its own asset register or whether it identifies sites from other state-owned entities or private sector. As it's also submit that uh, list of uh, to the Department of Health for assessment, and then the uh, assessment is then conducted by Department of Health. Approval granted based on guidelines and specification by Department of Health. And as the department, we sorry, would actually sorry, thank you. Sorry, Honorable Chair. Can I ask that the presentation be uploaded? Thank you. No, Can I no. Thank you. I was gonna. I was gonna ask that as well. Thank you very much. I'm on slide five, uh, honourable members and chair. No. I've covered uh, item number one, two, three, four, five of uh, that particular slide. And now I was on um, item number six, uh, that talks to activation of a facility from the private sector establishment. Um, what that means is that uh, the Department of Health would actually dispatch necessary PPEs, which are personal protective uh, equipment and medical practitioners, 
and then SAPS will actually dispatch its own uh, security services to the site concerned. And Department of Public Works will then sign the, uh, the service level agreement with the private uh, establishment, and then we uh, activate the site for the admission of people to the quarantine site concerned. Um, from there, it is a question of doing the transactions in terms of the uh, submission of invoices and making sure that those ones are processed accordingly. This is the, the, uh, the table, the next slide, uh, a table that reflects that which I've already kind of given um, uh, some bit of background on that we identify facilities. That is on the far left, um, is colored in uh, orange, and then in the middle, a section that is assessed and compliant facilities. It, uh, it's got a um, yellow kind of a color. And then the far right, the far right, which is light blue, and then it talks only to activated facilities. Those are kind of facilities where we have got a uh, number of people that which have, have been already accommodated in those specific sites. Uh, this is just a breakdown in terms of the quarantine sites that which have been assessed and they are regarded as compliant. That's the next slide um, across the, the, the country. And uh, we, in the next slide, slide number nine, then we are just giving the breakdown in terms of uh, provinces, <coughs> uh, province including its own uh, district municipalities. And that goes for slide 11, slide 12, that would be North, Northern Cape and Northwest. And the, sli the slide 18, that talks to the Western Cape. Um, these are the figures that keep on changing. Um, as I, I, as I uh, present on this one, there is already information about the Eastern Cape, which seems to be having zeros uh, on this particular presentation. But they have already indicated this uh, today, this morning, that they have got uh, uh, people that have been already uh, at, at, uh, housed in the, in the activated uh, facilities. Those are Alfred Zo, Amatole Buffalo, O Artambo, Chris Rani, and and uh, um, yeah, I think Buffalo and Chris Rani, yes. Coming to slide number 14. Slide number 14 gives um, the rental cost. It 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 it, it responds to the question around uh, the issues of standard tariffs that which have been uh, negotiated. Um, uh, with these uh, private establishment. Those ones who were involved in negotiation, it was the National Treasury and Department of Tourism. Uh, those are kind of terms and conditions uh, under which, um, I mean, uh, on which these, uh, they, they, they were kind of agreement between the, the two departments uh, with the establishment's consent. Um, that is a Festa hotel. You will charge. We will be charged 850 if the sharing is 1,035. For a two-star hotel, is 950. It will be 1,000 if we sharing, and it goes up until the four-star hotel. And then the next slide it, it talks now to the hotels at which we have uh, contracted thus far as the National Department of Public Works. Those are the amounts that which we have, uh, we have to um, a budget for. And uh, it, the total amount, which is 28 million, 677, 600 rands. Um, then we come to the state-owned facilities. There was also a question that was raised around the state-owned uh, facilities. And then in here, in this slide, number 16, the next slide, it talks now to the two facilities that which the Department of Public Works has made it ready uh, for activation by the Department of Health. Uh, we have had a meeting earlier on this morning and uh, there was also communication to the DOG, sorry, to um, uh, yeah, DOH uh, in the province, the head of the, of the province, of the department there in the province. To say that we need these ones to be activated as a matter of agents. We're just waiting for, for the response in that regard. And it took over two it, it took over two months to have these facilities refurbished and currently uh, finished to accommodate people that will be referred to the quarantine 
and IDT was not involved. There was also a question around uh, IDT's involvement uh, in, this, uh, in, the, in the repairs and uh, possible construction of the facilities. But IDT was not involved in, all, in, in the two facilities that which we are talking about as state-owned. Provincial public parks have their own facilities, which they avail from their own immobile asset register to serve as quarantine. For any refurbishment, the provinces uh, follow its own procurement process and it accounts, but they all report to the NAT joint so that that report can actually filter through to the NCCC. Those are the amounts in the next slide. That is the amount of the two, um, the cost related to the two facilities that which we, are, we have made reference to in the previous uh, slide with a total amount of uh, 5 million that which we have uh, spent uh, thus far. Um, coming now to the issue of challenges uh, around the, uh, the, the, the private, uh, private owned facilities for intended period. The repairs and renovation of sites costly and time delay. These are not, I mean, these are the state owned facilities, not private owned facilities. There's a bit of uh, background noise. Um, I'm getting distracted. Uh, the theft of equipment and damages to the asset, the procurement of beds is also a bit of a challenge because we must have a strategy uh, in terms of those beds as to where do we take them to after uh, or post COVID-19 and the provision of catering uh, services and, and also ensuring the health and safety uh, requirement. The next slide, uh, it talks now to the challenges in general when we talk about this uh, project of identifying and making the quarantine sites uh, functionally um, available to be used as quarantine. The, the process of quarantine commences with directives and standard operating uh, chair. Hello, chair. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting uh, disrupted by the background noise. I think there's uh, mics that are un unmuted. Okay. Nola, uh, can you please uh, ensure that the other mics are unmuted? Please. Thank you, um, thank you, thank you Chair. We'll, we'll do just that. I just want to I just want to plead with all the honourable members to switch off the TVs because they're giving feedback. It's feedback from the TV that we're receiving from the side. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, then now I'll only cover the challenges uh, in general that we encounter um, as the uh, people who are involved in this project. The first one is the issue of process of quarantine uh, started without the standard operating procedure. And then there was an intervention by the minister in that regard, uh, where uh, she was um, um, uh, uh, inducing on us to make sure that we developed the standard operating procedures. That process is uh, almost finalized. Uh, that uh, document is, uh, was signed this morning from my side, and then it goes, it goes to the DG, and it will go to the minister as well. Um, there is also a protocol document uh, on roles of key uh, stakeholders that includes uh, public works, uh, health, as well as tourism. The protocol document uh, is also due today that it must actually serve uh, before the ministers of four departments. The terms and condition upon which the negotiated uh, rates for private hospital was based, problematic one is the issue of aim for the whole hotel, regardless of the occupancy level. That is what we have been having a problem with. Um, I think the second bullet, uh, that matter has been addressed uh, since. And we are saying that we are trying to negotiate with hotels, but there are those ones that are, are not uh, amenable to, uh, they would want us to take the whole hotel. And then there are also challenges around the issues of uh, the, uh, the flights that are coming through, carrying the repatriates coming back home. And that matter was also raised at the NAT joint to say that at least we must be given 
72 hours uh, lead time to arrange the quarantine facilities uh, so that uh, we can have that one uh, 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 run smoothly. The people checking in hotels to self-quarantine, there were some such cases, but what we have advised the hotels is that it must not be at the government expense, that somebody will just uh, wake up and decide to go to a hotel and check himself or herself in self-quarantine. Um, and also agencies calling hotels claiming to be acting on behalf of government, that also we're actually engaging the hotels and then it would be on the service level agreement that which we are currently revising. People in quarantine facilities, that's also a challenge, uh, released, released prematurely before the expiry of the prescribed 14 day period. That is a concern that which also we have raised um, with the NAT joint, but it was emphasized that the, uh, the 14 day period should be observed by all those ones uh, who have been uh, taken to quarantine facilities. But we, there are still in some cases where such is not uh, really implemented. Some, and it has on, a, an implication on, on the issues of uh, the contract itself. When we sign the contract, it must actually be able to reflect that it is for this period. Now, if people get released before that period, it makes uh, contractual arrangements to be compromised. Some provinces do not implement mandatory quarantine uh, for people coming through the land port of entry. Um, one example is the province uh, of Limpopo, that which have been, uh, and then um, uh, also Free State. But uh, they've been cooperating. Uh, we still have a, a bit of a challenge with the uh, Limpopo province. But that has also been uh, brought to the attention of the NATRA. Basically, that is uh, all that which I, I try to rush through. Uh, I hope um, I've, I've, I've uh, 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 given justice to the, to the presentation. Thanks, Chair. Chair, should, should we get to the next hour? We are waiting guidance from the Chair. Can we agree? Can we agree then, uh, as the co-chair, that you go to the next presentation? Okay. Thanks very much, Thank Honourable Chair. Can we ask uh, Mr. Pillay to take us through the EPWP one? Whilst we are still working on the uh, bed, one, they are still putting it in my computer here. Mr. Thank you, DG. Uh, good afternoon, chairpersons, members of the portfolio committee, members of the select committee, minister and DM, DG. Uh, <clears throat> I will try to do this presentation very quickly within the 10 minutes. Uh, is it visible on the screen? It is now. Yes, it is. It is. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go to slide three immediately. Uh, just to give you a very quick background, uh, the, the pr presentation that we're making is exclusively to the National Department of Public Works and Infrastructure EPWP branch intervention. Uh, we have not yet uh, consolidated the, the actions of various other public bodies that are implementing uh, EPWP during uh, as part of the COVID-19 response. Uh, this will be done within the next two days. On Wednesday or so, we need to present a comprehensive picture to the uh, to the working stream on economics to give them a, to give them an indication of the scope and extent and the various sectors within which EPWP is functioning. So just to re uh, re recap, this is only a presentation on DPWI's intervention. Uh, and the intervention started around the 18th of uh, March when we got a request from NetJoins to develop a youth brigade to assist in quarantine sites. On the 20th of March, there was a discussion among several government departments on the Department of Health's hygiene strategy, uh, which was at a draft at that point. Uh, following the discussions, uh, it emerged that the Department of Health does not have support to, to roll out the hygiene strategy from an educational perspective. And it was then agreed that EPWP will, will assist in this regard. <clears throat> so around, uh, around the same time, we began to map EPWP's activities 
we decided that the best intervention is through the EPWP non-state sector NPO program, which is implemented to the, through the Independent Development Trust. And uh, this program has been running for the past 10 years, and we've implemented it exactly the same methodology as we've implemented it the previous years, uh, which is IDT contracts with NPOs, and NPOs then contract with participants closest to the place of work. Uh, initially, we looked at about 136 NPOs across the country, covering the 44 districts and the eight metros uh, of around 150 participants uh, per NPO, and we came up with a figure of 20,400. Soon after that, uh, Minister advised that uh, through a directive that she prefer higher numbers, and she directed we look at 25,000. So the 25,000 is basically recruited across, once again, the 44 districts and the eight metros. They are focusing per, 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 per district is around 460 odd uh, participants. <clears throat> Just in summary, uh, to date, we've contracted 170 NPOs. There's 20 still that needs to confirm. We've recruited just over 22,000 participants. The current wage level that we are paying is as per the ministerial directive and in align with the NSS NPO program of 101 rand per day. DPWI is being Ill, will be the employer of this initiative and hence we are providing uh, personal protective equipment for all participants. In the main, it's, it's masks, hand sanitizers and gloves. Uh, the, 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 the driver behind this initiative is the Department of Health. The EPWP is simply providing participants with protective gear to assist the Department of Health in its initiatives. And, and as I mentioned earlier, it's it's linked to the educational campaign. Uh, and I'll speak through the other two issues uh, in the next slide. Uh, <clears throat> so if we go down here and the slide here, you look at the, there's a breakdown of the number of NPOs that we've targeting per province, the, ta the number of uh, participants targeted per province. And the third column gives you our current recruitment as uh, as we sp as we stand. Now, this is the three key activities that we'll be involved in. The first, as I mentioned, is the hygiene strategy. The second and third activities, which is tracking of contacts and triaging, are linked to activities within the screening uh, of uh, activities of Department of Health. Uh, we, we engaged the Department of Health quite extensively before we brought in the participants to ensure one, participants are safe during these this, this activities and any engagements they have with the community. Two, they needed to work under the supervision of either a health professional or a, or a community health worker who's very knowledgeable about these areas. So essentially, DPWI, EPWP participants will be supporting and providing administrative support uh, to, to these activities. Now, some of the key risks we've identified is one uh, which initially emerged was the availability of protective uh, gear for the participants. <clears throat> we've been able to overcome that so far. We've we started the process of procuring PPEs. The next issue is on training for, for the EPWP participants. One of the fundamental trainings they will undergo prior to actually starting any activities on the ground speaks to, pre, uh, to, to preventative uh, measures. So EPWP participants will be taught how to prevent themselves from being infected. There's also a link to other, other activities around the hygiene strategy, which they will then use for themselves, but also communicate that to members of the community. And they'll also thirdly be trained on the actual activities that they are required to perform. Now, uh, there is always the, the possibility of an EPWP participant being infected while undertaking these activities. So we've aligned our response to the Department of Employment and Labor's uh, occupational health safety occupational health safety regulations on COVID-19, where if someone is infected in the workplace, they they are eligible to claim through COIDA. Uh, as a as a, to be proactive in this regard, we've already paid COIDA upfront the monies that are required to cover these participants. Uh, the the third area that we that, that's quite crucial in terms of, of uh, risks is, and it still is happening at the moment, is there seems to be a, a, a disconnect between the D National Department of Health activities versus the Provincial Department of Health activities, 
We've communicated this to colleagues at the Department of Health uh, around the 24th because it seems as though provinces are doing very similar activities or busy recruiting for very similar activities that the EPWP national intervention seeks to respond to. So there's an engagement currently as we speak now with the Department of Health on these, on these matters. And <clears throat> the next slide speaks to the implementation plan. As I've mentioned, uh, this initiative is driven by the Department of Health. We've provided them so far with the 22,000 participants that we have. They are currently working on a deployment plan in terms of the three activities I, I've mentioned. The deployment plan uh, hopefully will be ready within the next day or two. It's, it was to have been developed by last week. Uh, <clears throat> so all of the activities that I speak to in, in the next two slides uh, are, are linked to the readiness of the Department of Health to deploy EPWP participants. Uh, the next slide speaks to the issue of uh, payment of EPWP participants during the lockdown. Uh, the minister correctly was very concerned that during the lockdown, EPWP participants who are from the very poorest of poor households in our country may be left in a worse off situation during the lockdown if they are not paid. So minister issued a directive around the 26th of March instructing that all EPWP participants that have a valid contract during the lockdown should be paid. However, subsequent to that, the Department of Labor uh, released the Temporary Employer Employees Relief Scheme. And this provides for, for, for any worker that has contributed to UIF to benefit from, from uh, the scheme. Uh, EPWP participants, as you're aware, all contribute to UIF. So hence, they become, they become eligible for this benefit. I think it's important to point out that in terms of TERS, uh, workers earning the minimum wage, which is 3,500 and below, will earn their full wage. And, and persons that earn above 35 start on a sliding scale to a maximum of 17,000. So it is our view that the department of, that the EPWP participants should receive full wage in, in, in this regard. Uh, <clears throat> so currently there's a process in turn in the department to align these two things. Uh, Chairperson, in summary, thank you. That is my presentation. I just asked the committee to note uh, and to support what we've presented so far. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kevin. Uh, Honorable Chair, we'll proceed now to the Bait Bridge uh, Border Fence presentation, which is going to be undertaken by DDG Watu Mukutu. Watu, you can, you can proceed. Agreed. You can proceed. Uh, Chair, just member Wayne Thring here. I'm concerned that one, we may have uh, lost our chair, um, and then two, the presentation is actually not coming up on my screen. I don't know whether whether other members are having the same problem. Uh, yeah, we lost me a little bit. Um, I'm in the wrong area, though, so we lost network. But I'm back now. <laughs> Can you please, uh, DG, ensure that the presentation, we see them on our screen. And can, can we go to the, the, the last presentation, please? Okay, we are ready. We are ready. We are going to proceed to the next presentation. Uh, Devon, you can you should remove yours. Devon, remove your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Batu, you can proceed. We can hear you, Batu. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope I'm audible now. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, Honourable Minister, uh, Honourable uh, DM, uh, DG, and uh, colleagues. I am uh, sharing the presentation uh, now, and I hope it's uh, it's uh, visible. Um, I will focus on uh, seven key slides uh, due to the interest of time. Um, I will take the meeting through the executive summary, which is on slide four. Excuse me, Chair. Uh, 
excuse me, but you, I, I don't see the presentation. I don't know whether other members do see it. Honorable String, can you see the presentation now? Yeah. Uh, it's she, on the no, screen. I can't, but what I've, what I've now done is I've actually loaded it onto my uh, uh, laptop, so I'm viewing it from the laptop, uh, the presentation oh, that was sent earlier. That have, because I, but I can't I see it on I'm my screen. Doing. I know, even on my screen, I can't see any presentation. I can see it. Let's check with other honorable members. I can see it. Yeah, no, it's visible. But yeah, I can also make it bigger. I can, I can see it. But to just make it I... bigger, maybe. Maybe let me just use my my the one that I have. Uh, I think honorable string, let's do what you are doing. We use our the, the information that was sent to us because I can't see it. But can you please continue in the interest of time? Continue, Vatu. Thank you. The just to give uh, honorable members some background to this project. Um Pre-1994, SNDF uh, constructed and maintained the borderline fence. And uh, in the mid-90s, uh, uh, SNDF ceased from uh, uh, doing that function after 1994. Then the Department of Agriculture uh, then took over the construction and maintenance of the border fences and recovered the maintenance costs from the Department of Public Works until 2005. The department is then currently uh, in the early planning stages of upgrading all the borderline fences and uh, the patrol roads, which are, are not in a, in a good condition. And uh, this work will uh, comprise of uh, the uh, RSA Swaziland Mozambique, which is uh, uh, broken up into phase A and phase B according to town planning services. It's 54 kilometers for phase A, 500 kilometers for phase B. Then RSA Zimbabwe is 700 kilometers according to town planning services. And uh, RSA El Nusutu is 600 kilometers in accordance to town planning services as they are busy with the, the site clearances uh, in order for these projects to be uh, upgraded and registered accordingly. In January 2020, this year, uh, SNDF uh, sponsored a negative publication and um, it said that the conditions of our borderlines, particularly between uh, South Africa and Zimbabwe, is in a, in a bad condition. The department then responded by going to the site together with uh, the Department of Defense in January 2020. And uh, from that meeting, uh, a technical committee was then established um, in which a decision was then taken that uh, provincial, uh, provisional site clearance for maintenance must then be issued to maintain the existing uh, borderline fence while we're still waiting for the, the bigger project that is still in the early stages of town planning. However, we're overtaken by events as a, a, a national state of disaster was then declared by the Honorable uh, President. Uh, following that, the Minister of Public Works invoked Section 27.2 of the Disaster Management Act uh, after that, the minister uh, issued a directive on the 16th of March for emergency securing of the borderline fence. And there are three salient parts in this directive. Um, number one, the contractor must be on site by the 20th of March 2020. Number two, uh, that uh, a site visit must take place by the 18th of March. And um, consideration of a, a VO process uh, under this emergency uh, situation. The 
Slide number four, as I've indicated, honorable members, just takes us through the executive summary. And I've given uh, pretty much time on the background. Um, and uh, in the presentation, I will uh, take us through the different components. And just to also say that the project uh, currently as we speak was completed on time and uh, completed within budget. I'll also take through honorable members, the different uh, cost comparisons of offenses. So we get a feel of how much do fences cost in South Africa. And then I'll also provide a way forward. I am going to uh, take us through the sections that I've mentioned. Um, the emergency procurement was then uh, embarked upon by the Department of Public Works under this um, disaster uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Um, the procurement strategy used was the uh, negotiated uh, procurement strategy. Um, the most important part for us to note, honorable members, is that this contract, it is uh, premised on the uh, existing contract of the uh, Bay Bridge land port of entry. By that, I mean that the land port of entry existing contract was predetermined through a, a competitive uh, bidding process. And um, the bidder then had activities and rates that were predetermined through a competitive bidding process. Now, these rates are considered scheduled rates. Um, and uh, this contract that was used uh, baselined on the scheduled rates, which were predetermined by the market. Uh, if we look at the uh, slide 11, we can see a, a comparison that has been done. Uh, if we take and inflate the scheduled rates by CPI, we escalate rather by CPI at 4%, we get a figure of 39 million. If we escalate the baseline by uh, CPAP, uh, you get a figure of 38 million. The tender sum was 37 million. What this gives us the indication that we are within the market reasonability. Uh, because we are actually below CPI and we are below the uh, contract uh, price adjustment of uh, CPAP by 37 uh, uh, million. Honorable members, I will go through the slides to slide 15. Uh, slide 15 uh, gives us a, a context of the type of fence that has been installed uh, by the defense. Uh, here we see that um, the fence is of a similar nature, uh, which has been provided by this, this contract, this project. Uh, in fact, the site clearance that was issued was for maintenance, for us to upkeep the fence as it was in a bad condition. And um, it, it, if we uh, uh, take the honorable members to site and I hope we have that opportunity to do so. We will then travel uh, the, the span of the borderline to see exactly what type of infrastructure is there. As we can also see, the patrol roads are, are, are in need of um, upgrading. And also, uh, the, the, the fence is also in need of upgrading. Uh, that is why there is this project that is planned, as I initially mentioned in the background, which will address uh, these issues and these challenges. Slide number 17 uh, takes us through um, what plant and site workers the contractor used. The contractor uh, in question is comes by the name of uh, Caledon River Properties, P2I LTD, trading as Mahua Construction. Uh, this contractor uh, had to uh, hire plant, uh, had to mobilize uh, workers, 
to be able to complete uh, this project, which was done within a period of one month. Uh, we have plants such as TLB, a bobcat, uh, additional uh, graders were provided, 22 ton excavators as listed. The uh, labor force that was on site included the contractors' personal staff, 18 men, subcontractors, 50 men. Uh, then workers were sourced from Musina local municipality, 160. And then the security personnel were around 40. The security on the site worked uh, in, had to be uh, very strategic and tactical um, to ensure that uh, the contractor is not delayed in any way. Uh, he had uh, uh, 40 men that were uh, deployed uh, on site uh, in the evening between 6 and uh, 6 in the morning. Honorable members, I would like to take you through the next slide, which shows the subcontractors that were employed. In the uh, production, uh, you, you have to look at the entire value chain of, of the fence from uh, the raw material, from the mill, to where it goes to uh, manufacturing, uh, and then uh, gets transported. And uh, when it arrives on site, it's quality checked. Um, once it's quality checked, it's stored, and then it is distributed depending on the sections that the contractor will be, will be working on. The next uh, slide, which is number 24, shows a typical program of how the contractor managed to squeeze in this job in a short space of time. Um, he worked through five kilometer sections of the work. And uh, in this particular instance, it shows when, how he started programming the work from the beginning until the 20th of April when practical completion was up, up, obtained. Honorable members, uh, in any project, we have three levels of, of completion. The first completion is called, uh, as, we, as we are familiar, is practical completion, which took place on the 20th of April. Uh, then the snag list is developed um, if there are minor things that have to be done. In our case, there was a snag list and the contractor was given until the 24th of April to complete those items. He indeed completed them. And on the 28th of April, the... Uh, uh, works completion was then taken. Uh, from the works completion, what we have is a 12-month latent defects period, whereby if there's any imperfection of uh, the material or uh, poor make workmanship that is uh, discovered, the contractor will come back and repair at his or her own cost. After the 12 months, then we take the, the final uh, completion. Slide number 30 takes us through a high-level cost comparison for honorable members to get a feel of how much do, do fences cost per meter um, in South Africa. Um, the first is the our this project, which at, at final account it is anticipated that it will cost less than 37 million. And uh, the estimated cost per meter will be 850. And just to explain the aspect of final account, uh, final account is due 14 days after the the uh, works completion. Uh, the team is is working together uh, with the, the 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 appointed principal agent. By the team, I mean DPWI uh, engineers uh, to make sure that the uh, value for money um, and all the other queries that were raised uh, that we don't have any comebacks. And um, the, the team is working diligently. Um, now, the second table uh, makes reference to the high security fence. The high security fence is also shown uh, on the next slide. Uh, and for us to put a fence of this nature, it'll cost us 4,200 rand per meter. 
it approximated in that, that fashion. Then the last fence is a, a game fence. Uh, this fence without electrification will cost about 200 rand per meter. And if we electrify uh, the, that component alone is approximated at 300, uh, which will then take the electrified uh, game fence to be 500 uh, rand per meter. Uh, honorable members, I will then go through to the last slide, which gives a, a way forward in terms of what is the Department of Public Works doing now uh, with regards to the, uh, the, the, the fence. Uh, first of all, we uh, are putting together um, a maintenance approach uh, to keep the fence uh, you know, as, as it was at completion, uh, upkeeping of that fence, uh, that process is underway. We have uh, communicated with the defense to, intensif to intensify patrol at the borderline fence between RSA and Zimbabwe. We have uh, communicated with defense that we have to complete and conclude agreements between the two departments uh, to clarify the role and responsibility of the borderline infrastructure. And also we have communicated to defense that a military alliance or, or treaty is essential uh, to manage illegal crossing. Crossings as our borderline infrastructure is only as good as the ability to manage illegal crossings. Uh, honorable members, I will then pause at this point and take questions. Thank you very much, honorable members. We are, we are done. I think the, the honorable chairperson of the portfolio committee is currently experiencing uh, connection problems due to network issues. So we would like to request the honorable co-chair from the select committee to, to, to lead us through the question session. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Nala. We will then uh, take this opportunity to express uh, our appreciation uh, to the, the team led by the DG. Uh, we will then uh, uh, check the, the list of members that would want to to uh, to engage with the department. Uh, so that at least there is a there is a there is a, a flow of discussion and, and a flow of engagement. Uh, if I can just be helped with the list of uh, uh, NA members, so that uh, what I will, what I would request Nola to do, uh, just uh, you 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 manage that part for me. Uh, the list of NA members. Uh, what I will do, I will request that we we, we, we we take the first three NA members and then go to the to the to the first uh, three uh, NCOP members, and then uh, we flow in that fashion. Thank you. Uh, sorry, chair. Uh, I see my uh, chat uh, icon is uh, disabled. That is the reason why I said let Nola help us because I could see that the chat uh, is, 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 is experiencing problems. So let's okay. start with the oh. NA members, the first three NA members, and then we'll go to the uh, first three uh, select committee members. Can you, okay. can you know them, uh, Nola? Can you recognize them? Thank you, Chair. I'd like to recognize the Honorable Mjobo. The Honorable Fans Galvik and the Honorable um, Mashele from the Portfolio Committee to go first. Let's move in that fashion. Does the Honorable Mjobo have any question? Let's go to the next one. Okay, next on the list is the Honorable Fans Galbeck. 
thank you. Am I audible? Yes, 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 you are. Shalom. Uh, a good day, uh, co-chairperson, members, and uh, the department. Thank you very much for the presentations. It's uh, really insightful, the info that has been distributed. Without wasting time, Chair, I want to start with the last presentation on the Bait Bridge uh, issue. Can you, uh, the department, give us a clarification? We've seen the photographs there, and it's stating the different dates, 2004 and 2007. But I didn't see any recent photographs before the, the actual uh, 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 fencing took place. So can we get, get an indication of, of uh, if there are photo, recent photographs? The other issue, Chair, is in terms of the uh, EPWPs. Uh, we acknowledge that uh, the, they will be paid the 101 rand per person per day. But uh, I need to know, will that be going to the coffer, uh, pockets of the uh, employees or is there additional funds that's going to the, uh, the employers? Uh, then in terms of the, the current EPWP workers who is now going to benefit from the UAF process, the TERS benefit, can we get an indication of how long they're going to benefit? Is it going to be for, for the entire lockdown period uh, to throughout all the levels? Or is it just going to be for a limited period, noting that some of the contracts will be ending during the lockdown period? Then in terms of the quarantine sites, I uh, can we get an update as soon as possible, especially in terms of those uh, numbers that stating zero uh, in the Eastern Cape, so that we can uh, monitor also in terms of where that numbers is going. Then uh, when looking at the epicenter, which is the Western Cape, we see that 30 out of 172 uh, were assessed and ready. But when we look at the occupancy, we see that it's only private institutions. Can we have a breakdown in terms of that so that we can know why they are only making use of private facilities for, for quarantine. Then also the last one is, can we get an indication uh, and regu regular states in terms of uh, 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 what, what's happening in terms of the provinces, those facilities that they've uh, uh, identified so that we can have a national uh, databases instead of, of only the national uh, the uh, the national one is currently. Then we need to have a. Thank you, 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 Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, talk. Okay, no, no, thank you very much. Uh, I've got a question. Eh? One, again, um, on the issue of the quality checks, eh? because after you finish with the construction, you need to do a quality check. Who was the contractor that did the quality check and approved that work? Because when you approve it, you say it's fine, and then the people can be paid. Number two, can we get the breakdown, of course, because this presentation doesn't tell us the breakdown, what happened properly. In, in actually, on the POQ, there's no breakdown properly, step by step. And then the other one, especially on that bait bridge um, thing, is that I think that the portfolio committee must go there and do oversight. And check, so let's not listen to hearsay on what say. Let us go there and check and do, because this is quite a lot of money. 37 million is quite a lot of, of money. We need to check if there's maybe there's a, any, um, a, a, you know, some actually, you know, the value for money. It was going to be nice if we had a state company. If we have a state company, we're not going to be falling into this thing of these the, the tenders. So it would be very nice that ITT can be converted into one of the state companies. Now, on the issue of the, can you get a list of the NPOs for the EPWP? Can you get the list of the NPOs? Who are they? And how many each? How many have they put in so that we're able to check and go and do our own oversight? Yeah, one. Well, 
So we can you get that list? I don't know. Maybe you'll give us a, a you know the, the guidance chair. Uh, when are we gonna get actually that? And also, there must be sort of a timeline because it doesn't say what is happening. So okay, they're gonna be re, you know there's the you know the recruitment training the the time must say recruitment training, and then you know so there must be a clear a, a, a timeline. I didn't see that. I think that also this hundred and one. Uh, this hundred, uh, this hundred rand and one uh, 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 per day is small. I think that I would recommend that it may be the, the, the department must actually do, you know, the review. And also remember, I don't know if how long can they give us how long are these EPWP working? Yeah, when I check uh, for and how long it's right? day. Yeah. Uh, sorry, how many how many minutes do I have now? You, you, you are you are you are fine now. You'll have uh, a second round, one minute second round. For the when, when we come back to you, let's proceed to the to the okay. first three members. Uh, honorable Hai, and then Honorable Tim, and then Honorable Matevula. Let's move in the first. Yes. Honorable Boshoff as well, please. All right, Honorable Boshoff, noted. Honorable Lemala. And Honorable Hicklin, please. Uh, and our members, can, we, we have agreed on an approach. Uh, we've uh, with the first three Freddy. members of the NA. Uh, now we are moving to the next three of the NCOP. Then we'll go to the next round of the NA members. Thank you, honorable members. Let's proceed for the sake of uh, smooth running of the meeting. Honorable Khai. No, so, 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 can I ask quickly, how much time are we, are we allocated? Is it per presentation or per all of them? Because we were given three minutes. It will be three minutes per, per uh, the whole presentation. That's why we said we are going to have a second round. Oh, okay, okay. Sure that, uh, we, are, we, are, we are more efficient of time. So we'll okay, come to sure. you. Thank cool. you, Honorable uh, Honorable Khai? Yeah, I hope I can start now. Uh, yes. th thanks, Chair. I, I think the, the point that was raised uh, by Honorable Chwaku with regard to oversight visit, perhaps it should be a recommendation that must be taken to the House chairpersons so that they take up uh, with, the, with the relevant uh, structures. Because for now, uh, okay, up until Thursday, uh, people are go, uh, allowed to go to, the, uh, to their provinces. But after the 7th, uh, nobody is allowed to go to another province. So I think it's a great area that uh, must be taken up with the House chairpersons uh, so that it's taken up with government to allow members of parliament to conduct an uh, oversight visit because that will mean they will have to go through other provinces other than their own uh, provinces. Uh, Chair, I just wanted to ask uh, on the quarantine uh, facilities whether once they are identified, are they being paid before they are occupied? Uh, two, the, there's a, a quotation of a, a single end sharing room. Does that mean those who are being quarantined are allowed to share rooms? Is, is that uh, okay health-wise? Um, but also with regard, I, there was a list of uh, lodges and hotels. I don't know whether the government is using its policy of a uh, triple PE to ensure that uh, also black people benefit uh, out of these uh, facilities uh, that are rented out uh, to government. Also, the, uh, the issue of uh, a 14 day period of quarantine. Are people being tested after having, uh, after the 14 days uh, has lapsed or just before the or they are just released because the uh, 14 days has, uh, has uh, come to an end. The issue of uh, the EPWP, I, I don't know where, how government works. You know, Department of Labor has what is called the uh, Employment Services of South Africa, where they have a database in their program of public uh, employment service. Why doesn't then government departments go to Department of Labor in that particular database of a uh, Department of Labor and source people uh, from that, because uh, there are thousands in that uh, database uh, that uh, are unemployed, but uh, they, they put their profiles uh, in that particular uh, system. Uh, because of time, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hai. Uh, 
I'll come back later. Thank you, Hi. What about Tim? Chair, thank you very much. And I want to thank you very much for ensuring that we could join this meeting today. Thank you for your intervention in that regard. Chair, I'd like to just kick off with um, EPWP. Uh, Chair, I would like to remind colleagues about the entire purpose of the lockdown. The entire purpose of the lockdown over the first five weeks was to make sure that South Africa was ready to deal with a spike in infections, to make sure that we were ready from a health point of view, and Public Works was involved in that to make sure we were busy, uh, ready for a quarantine point of view. The, the info given to us today is that on the 27th of March, it was decided to use EPWP workers. We were told then in the same presentation that on the 27th of April, X amount were recruited. That, that indicates to me something very concerning, Chair, and that means that we are still not ready. We are still training people five weeks into the lockdown. We should have been ready a lot earlier than this to deal with the purpose of the lockdown. The purpose of the lockdown is not to carry on forever. So if I can get some response on that. Then when we go into the, the quarantine sites, um, Chair, I'm, I've, I've written to the, the minister asking for a list of all the provincial sites. Um, my uh, Honourable Chai referred to oversight. And we, it's impossible for us in our, in our areas where we live, uh, where we work, our constituencies, to go and do oversight if we don't get a full list of all the provincial sites so that we can ensure as members of parliament that these sites are actually suitable for quarantine or isolation purposes. Um, this is borne out by the fact that many sites have come to light that are not suitable. For instance, the Zitipaseni site in the in Mpumalanga, which is certainly way below standard as it, as it should be. And some of our colleagues have gone to do oversight there. Um, and then on the border fence, uh, Chair, um, can can the can the department tell us what the difference is between a COVID nineteen fence as opposed to a normal fence? I, I don't understand the difference between those two fences. I didn't know there was a new type of fence called COVID nineteen fence. If they could perhaps help us there. Um, and then when did that? Uh, then finally, the budget allocation. I've also asked the minister for a question, a written question on the budget budget allocation. The um, the slide that went out on the quarantine sites refers to a figure of 23 million and a figure of 25 uh, million. 23 million was being spent on hotels, but only some hotels in Johannesburg and that, and uh, the 5 million on on, uh, EP, uh, on public work sites. Is that the full budget that's being spent on quarantine facilities, or is there a larger budget that is going to be uh, spent? I need to have a figure of the amount that public works have set aside to identify and make available sites and the budget exp to be expended on the quarantine sites. I'll leave it there for now, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on Rama Tebula. Can we go then go to Honorable Boshoff? Thank you very much, Chair, and good afternoon to everybody. Um, I've been partially covered by Honourable Bart Seth, but to get back to the Zintabiseni quarantine facility in Mpumalanga, as he mentioned, um, people have done oversight there today, and what they found was very disturbing. So I think one should really um, request that the Select Committee and the um, Portfolio Committee does oversight there to determine where the problem lies. What I'd like to know with regard to this um, facility is, what is the rate that these people are hosted at? Who pays and to whom is the money paid? And then I'd also like to know, they spoke about Limpopo. Um, they do not implement uh, mandatory quarantine measures. Um, when people come through the borders. What has been done in this regard to address these challenges? And then the people that have been released prematurely from the quarantine centres, how many have been released prematurely? And on whose decision was that done? Because if there's a national mandate that somebody should be in a quarantine centre 14 days, 
Who then decides, okay, they can leave after seven days or 10 days or whatever? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Bischoff. We will uh, uh, go back to Honorable Mjobo. Is, is Honorable Mjobo back? Uh, I would like to ask a question. Can you move to my? Uh, we have agreed on an approach, Honorable uh, Mutsamai. Let's let's go back to Honorable Mchobo. I've I've noted you, Honorable Mutsamai. Uh, is Honorable Mchobo back? Can we then uh, go to Honorable Mutsamai? You are recognized, Honorable Mutsamai. Yes, I just want to know uh, after the president are uh, uh, the come police station is a signature is a one police team. Maruba or give fraud and how will I keep or over to will I case can do that? I want anything in Tahalan. Maponesa Aragas or no to a lagabula case can to a king to a twenty year. Honorable Mutamai, but the minister and judge to twenty years. I'm good. after president ana abua after this thing ya corona virus gore a hona batho ba ba tshwentseng ba emisiritsi batho ba tshwentseng ba be dintlo magwa ke a suspend le batho gore ba ile ba ha ba tla mesebetsi ene mesebetsi ya ten ke company e tsa ndipeke why suspend about worry? No, but about some civility. Get a company, I have one as one knows civic. Umponsa a permit, eight to Uncle Police Station. Get no police station, I hear TV permit, some civic. Then, or no, those people, let's go to meeting court. Can you tell the twenty? Dear to young Luquali Shojuan. Rahutuile Raleva Honorable Mutsamai. We will then uh, yeah, no. go back to the to the NA side. Is Honorable uh, Mashele, then uh, Honorable Shabalala, then Honorable Kopane. Let's move in that fashion. Uh, uh, apologies, Chair. Uh, apologies, uh, Chair. Honorable Kopane is not available. We we did allude to her. Apology earlier on. Honorable on standby. I'm not sure if he wants to ask his question now or during the second round. But there are other members yeah. from the portfolio committee that also indicated that that they would like to ask questions. Yeah, can you can you can, can you cite those names so that they, we can then proceed in that fashion? Thanks, Joe. We've got Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Thring, Honorable Hicklin, and Honorable Graham. As well as Honorable Numan. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Let's proceed in that fashion. Three of them, and then we'll then go back to the MCOP list. Uh, Honorable you, Suiza, you're on the thank floor. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, my question will be on the EPWP volunteers and recruits. That they have have they themselves been screened and have they received treatment? or training, in fact, will they be working alone or in the presence of medical practitioners? I think that one has been answered to me. My other question based on that, again, is that there's assistance in the case that participants get infected. That has been addressed. But the question that we need to look into is, are their families going to be assisted? Have these volunteers and recruits have been given counseling pertaining the work that they are going to do because this whole thing is very traumatizing even for a person that only tests positive. So have they been given the, the, the proper counseling? The other question will be on the identification of NPOs. What criteria was used to identify all of those NPOs and 
what do they know what their role is going to be? Because we already know that in the DPWI, we already have a problem of NPOs that we don't know where, whether they exist or not. And then coming to the Bay Bridge, why did it have to take the Department of Defense to make a discovery that the state of the f defense is not proper? Because one of the mandates of public works is that they need to do constant maintenance of any infrastructure that belongs to them. So in this case, we had to go over a, a, depart a department has to go and see that the fence is not proper. And you ask yourself, how long has that fence not been like that? For it only <coughs> to come into light in January that now an emergency funding has to be brought up to address the fence of Bay Bridge. And then you get that there are different codes for different fences. A fence is a fence. It, 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 its purpose is the same, to keep people out. Now we are being given a presentation of different fences with different quotations. And we need to find out as to from the Department of Public Works, why did it have to take the Department of Defense to make sure that the fence is actually proper or not. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable uh, Wiza. Uh, Honorable Thren. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, we firstly want to note the condolences and offer our condolences and prayers to the Honorable Matabula from the Portfolio Committee on his loss. Um, my questions, Chair, are with regards to the quarantine side, firstly, 795 private sites have been identified, as opposed to 612 state sites. The rental cost for the 14 privately owned facilities is some 28.6 million. Would this money not have been better put to use upgrading our state, uh, state sites and using state sites rather than pumping this money into the private, uh, the private sector sites? Um, now, this would require an updated, detailed, complete asset register, which this committee has been discussing at length. The next question on, these, on the properties then is, uh, does this asset register exist? And following on that, why are there 44 operating facilities in KwaZulu-Natal as compared to 15 in Gauteng and 19 in the Western Cape? When the latter two provinces uh, have higher infection rates than KwaZulu-Natal. Um, Public Works Infrastructure has the largest property portfolio in the country. And how many building structures belonging to the state are being currently used to install 5G antennas? And has the, the, the risk health analysis been conducted before approval? Uh, <clears throat> noting that the scientific evidence proving the harmful effects of 5G on workers, children, families, in the population in general. And then how effective has the erection of the bait border uh, fence um, been between South Africa and Zimbabwe? Uh, that is in preventing illegal immigrants gaining access to South Africa. And then what other measures or interventions have been set in place to secure the, our, our ports and borders? And then finally, Chair, I think that uh, the ACDP notes the ministerial directive to recruit 25,000 EPWP participants, uh, predominantly youth, uh, on 101 rand per day to assist the quarantine sites. Now, while these initiatives to boost our employment are welcome, it pales in comparison to the approximately 400, 500,000 to 1 million that may lose their jobs after lockdown. Um, our national deficit is set to widen to 6 to 12 percent and our debt to GDP set to grow to some uh, 12 to 8, some 80 percent. The restrictions on, on our economy appear to be thank you, the thank unintended you, thank you, thank consequence you, of destroying the economy, uh, causing more hunger, employment, and poverty than COVID-19. So that's a statement uh, following my thank questions. You. Thank you, Chair. My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, can we then uh, uh, go back to, is Honorable Jobo back on the line? Honorable Marcelle is back. Okay, Honorable Marcelle, uh, you can hit the ground running. Thank, Thank you, you very Honorable much. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Uh, 
let me let me start with uh, the Great Bridge issue. I think uh, it would be better that uh, the portfolio committee should find time to go and and visit the site. On on the issue of uh, EPWP, I think we must try by all means as government to make sure that uh, these people are protected. We know that uh, we're talking about highly vulnerable people uh, and NGOs and NPOs. Now, because they're unemployed and poor, they are going to take anything that comes their way. So it, it should be the responsibility of government to close that gap and make sure that uh, they are protected. I see the remuneration of 101. The question would be how much goes to the person because if that 101 goes uh, to the institution that uh, recruited the person. Surely the institution will have an interest uh, in taking a card there. So we, we must know how much goes to this particular person who's rendering the service. On the issue of the quarantine sites, I think uh, probably the department should explore an avenue of using uh, university residences, uh, boarding schools, and and all, all probably government uh, facilities. Schools are not uh, work, operating now. You have boarding schools. And when you look at the numbers, it's not uh, quite large numbers. Even if it can be, if government goes to a school and buy beds, it will be an investment to that particular school. It's government money. If the department spends money, in getting proper beds for these people, I think it's it's, it's worth it's, it's worth it. Equally, I look at the presentation there. It speaks about uh, uh, hotels and all that. Seemingly, those are big hotels. Why don't you go to? Why don't we explore an avenue of looking at small lodges and guest houses? Probably the price would be much better and will be empowering the smaller people in the industry. Get into them. We seem to have lost you, Honorable Marcelle. It, it's fine because he's, 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 over, he's <laughs> over two minutes already. <laughs> he must go, yeah. You, you, you yeah, actually gave us, let's, 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 you let's, only let's, gave us one let's, minute. Let's, one minute is seconds, but you let him speak all the way. I'm timing everyone here. We will not do that. Please. We will still have yeah, we still have questions as well. Yeah, no, we are going to have another round. Let's let's then go to uh, Honorable uh, Lansman, and then Honorable Lund, and then Honorable Dango. Uh, uh, honorable, sorry. You are on my list. You are on my list. Sorry, Sorry yes. I, I, I just want to raise something here. There was a oh, list. Thank you, yes, Chase I lost... thank you, Chase Beck. I, I lost the, the network uh, previously, but I'm back now. I, I had you, Nola uh, raising names that have to speak. I don't think that list is finished. We agreed that no one is going to raise his or her hand in the meeting, the list that we are using. So, so far, now I've had Honorable Suiza and Honorable Marcelle. I heard you saying three. I think we need to get someone, a third person, from the members of the NA. Thank you. Before Honorable Langsman comes in. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Let's then get uh, Honorable Langsman. Thank you. The next one on the list. Thank you very much, um, Chair. Um, my, I have largely been covered, but I'd like to just rephrase it in a couple of ways. Um, the mutual asset register has been mandated here, and many of the issues that we find in quarantine sites would have been addressed had we had a proper immovable asset register. This. Um, thing of order, two hours notice where people at quarantine sites are notified that people are coming in are not is not being adhered to 
Also, the, the potential sites, the list of potential sites that was drawn up, was any oversight actually done on those sites prior to that list being drawn up? And the Zeta Bezeni is a perfect example that no one actually did oversight because had they done oversight, they would have realized that that site was absolutely not ready to be used as a quarantine purpose. The SOP on lockdowns has not been done. We had a state of emergency and lockdown announced on the 17th of March. We are sitting on the 4th of May. We do not have an SOP. I don't understand why there's no protocol as yet. The choosing of private establishments and the letting out of people prior to the 14-day quarantine period. Good medical clinical practice determines that people who have come into the country have already been in quarantine, they land in quarantine, they are in quarantine for a good five days before they are tested. If they test negative for a second time, they can be allowed to be self-quarantined at home. That is good clinical practice. There is absolutely no need to hold people in a facility if they are able to self-quarantine. That is, that is a worldwide standard. And we are forcing people into a situation that is foreign to them. They are already stressed when good clinical practice determines that they can self-quarantine at home. And then the next and final question for me is the rate paid that we know that the rate paid to the hotels is astronomical. What is the rate paid to either state or provincial facilities? And who decides on what those facilities are? And are the public, the, the, the private um, facilities that are being used, are they paid in full prior to the people actually arriving there? Because that doesn't make financial sense on any level. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, can I... So the chairperson. the chairperson to proceed. The chairperson. Uh, I was holding the fort in the absence of the chair. The chairperson. Uh, you to proceed. Yes. I wanted to ask something. How many minutes are we having? Because other minutes and other other members are given one minute. Others are given three minutes. How many minutes? Can you just come up with a, a minute? So how many minutes? Or are we going to have a second round? Because we still have questions. We actually hurried us very quickly without actually getting finished. You're giving other people three minutes. Can you just rule out in terms of how many minutes are we having? Honorable Dabangwara, we, we have agreed on, on, on three minutes. Uh, but I wanted to propose that uh, because I was holding the fort in the absence of the chair, and I only request uh, Honorable Dabangwara to continue uh, chairing the session. Thank you, Honorable Dabangwara. The stage is yours. Oh. Oh, um, thank you, Honorable My Mank. Uh, 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 thank you for holding the fort. Uh, we still uh, need universal access of internet. Nola, can you call upon the three names from the NSOP that are going to speak now? Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I do not have the list from the NCOP, and I've asked my colleague to assist with that. But I think the the, the honourable chairperson from the select committee had had mentioned names of the members who would like to ask questions. So I think we should follow in that fashion. Uh, thank you, Chair. You it was honourable Lansman, uh, and then honourable Lont, and then honourable Dango. That fashion. Okay. Can we? Allow then those members to come in that fashion. We are not going to call someone, uh, please. And the we will be using two minutes, honourable members. Looking at the time that at four we are supposed to be out of here, and 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 we still expect the department to respond in your questions. So we'll have a stopwatch. Uh, honourable landsman, please come in two minutes, honourable member. I'm covered, chair. I'm covered. Uh, the one following him. Thank you. Um, it's a shame that the minister is not on this meeting to address this directly. 
Chairperson, we did raise in the past um, the issue of the political principles not yet, and I assume that you will convey the stance of the Select Committee. But um, I'm asking this question specifically from a Western Cape point of view, but I'm sure it's applicable across, across, across the country. Oh, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Apologies for that. Hello, um, Minister. Um, well, that's that's great. There's, there's a list of properties that's needed by local authorities, municipalities, that was sent through the department. Um, short and sweet answer, by when will the release of these properties happen so that the municipalities can utilize this to help address this crisis that we are in? Thank you. Uh, the one following uh, Honorable. Honorable Dango. Thank you, Chairperson. I just received an apology from Honorable Dango. It's Kropega. Okay, thank you. Then, Nola, can you please uh, read the names from the National Assembly, the Portfolio Committee, please? It's two minutes only. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we've got the Honorable Graham, Honorable Van Staden, and Honorable Nmalo. Then thereafter, it'll be yourself, Chairperson. Thank you. You have got Honorable Hendricks? Honorable Van... Honorable Samantha? Ryan, Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm starting off on the fence. Um, I want to know on what basis was it decided to, to replicate the old fence? Um, given that that fence erected in 2007, according to the pictures that we got, was completely removed. Surely somebody should have determined that this fence doesn't work and that this border um, and others require a more suitable fence design where necessary. Um, the, the report also acknowledges that the fence was gone. Um, that's on slide 8, 6A. Yet the program that we've been given allows for eight days of fence removal per five kilometers. That means that they've calculated 64 days of work um, to remove the old fence. At what cost was that calculated and why was that not removed from the programming when they established that there was no fence left? One of the justifications for the extremely high price tag was that the logistics of the site, as well as the very short time frame of the project, meant that labor and plant costs were higher. How could the contractor then afford the additional security within the costing of this project when this had not actually formed part of the initial bill of quantities? And if the agreed price was based on 2016 scheduled rates and only a 4% CPI increase was added, what were the justifications for this price in 2016, given that there were no time constraints at that stage? Um, and then finally, we are covered for latent defects for poor workmanship and imperfections, um, but we obviously then have to cover any of the stolen um, uh, portions. We've paid 850,000 Rand per kilometer for what is actually more, nothing more than a temporary measure, both in terms of the kind of fence and the fact that it has already been breached and entire kilometers of that fence are already missing. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Van Graham. Uh, Honorable Van Steden. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, now I want to touch on the quarantine facilities, facilities when people are coming over, over our borders to South Africa to spend their 14 days there. And I can, uh, um, give some comment that myself, I've received various complaints uh, uh, this past month regarding most uh, seven of most of these facilities, which is not uh, um, ready to receive these people. And I think we have a problem and it's come clearly through. And now with the, uh, the latest case in Grobersdal as well, it is clear to us that no inspections was done beforehand by anybody to go and see if these facilities are ready to accommodate the people because the, 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 the complaints we are getting is there's a lack of water, there's a lack of uh, a hygiene, there's a lack of bathroom facilities, and there's a lack of electricity. And this is from seven facilities. This is not only one. 
So I want to urge the minister that the facilities must be, uh, be, be made available or announced to the members at least of parliament where these facilities are so that we can go and fulfill our oversight role over these facilities and so these problems can be, be um, eradicated and we don't receive complaints from a public who's, who's currently going uh, 14 days under uh, this, that facilities. Um, so that is going to, this is already a starting to big problem. We see uh, various reports in the media now about the one facility and the latest one is, is in Mapumalanga, which is a big problem in this matter and we need to sort this matter out. Um, we can't let the people stay in conditions which is not habitable for, for anybody and, and it's totally unacceptable. And the last thing on the borderline, I just want to mention something. Yes, we must close the borders for the COVID-19 and we said that from the beginning, but we must must make sure that um, that the products, projects we are undertaking into this sort of matter must be managed properly and we must see to it that taxpayers' money must be spent wisely. So I just want to know on the department on two, two questions. What are we going to do about these facilities and, and the, the management of the borderline? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mumalo. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and greetings to colleagues. Uh, can I start with the quarantine size? Uh, I understand that in the background there is a mention of accounting offices and the municipalities. Can, can the department be more specific as to the nature of the venues that needs to be identified by the uh, accounting officers at local uh, government or at municipalities, whether it's community halls or, or, or clinics? And further to that, I, I also wish to, to raise my concern on, 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 on the case that and uh, assessed uh, beds uh, uh, facilities. Uh, it, it seems that we have or, or only uh, procured 915 beds over uh, 13,856 beds, which is almost about 6%. So I don't think that we are moving at the pace that will make us uh, uh, reach uh, post the lockdown uh, at a better position. I, I think uh, there's a steady movement in, 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 in the procurement of beds and then the, identify, the identification of sites. And also on that, I also want to ask a question, Chair, on, on, on the payment of the upfront payment of hotels, because say that the, the, the hotel can occupy uh, 500 people. Does that therefore mean that uh, the department is going to pay 500? What happens if we do not eventually have uh, 500 people who are going to occupy that particular, particular space? Uh, this goes to tie down to the issue of uh, 14 days quarantine. Do we have measures to ensure that those people that are in quarantine stay the entire period uh, in quarantine sites uh, for, for the 14 days so that we do not find ourselves paying for uh, uh, facilities or for paying for individuals in quarantine and therefore uh, and, and thus they leave before the actual time. And lastly, Chair, uh, on the paid bridge, uh, I would like to see a specification on the, the existing project the one that has already been underway as opposed to the one that has already just uh, uh, been put as an emergency. Because it, it, it tells you that the material that has been identified by the department technicians does not gel well. It, if, it has, if, if you can look at the 2007 pictures and the pictures that we see today, it, it, this thing just tells you that it does not bear any fruits, but we continue to pump up uh, public funds to, do, to go and do the very same thing. We've got a latent defects of 12 months, uh, and already, if, if we were to go there and find defects. Honorable Mumalo, your time is up. All right, your thanks, Chair. Your time is up. Uh, Mr. Supergi, can we get the, the, the members of the NSOP that have not yet spoken? Thank you, Chairperson. Yes. So far, all the members of the NCOP has spoken uh, in this first round, except except the chair. Okay. Can you hear me, chair? Honorable, honorable chair, you you want to say something? 
Chad, the, the, only, the only question that I have uh, that I want to bring to the department is uh, uh, it's around uh, uh, assuring the, the members of the joint standing uh, uh, that uh, indeed there is value for money. If they can just assure us as to whether in terms of uh, uh, amount spent, uh, given the fact that the Honourable Minister has indicated that uh, she's going to invite the Auditor General to make uh, a reflection on the work done, can she assure us that indeed there is value for money in the amount that has been spent on the project? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, members, we we have asked for e extension of the time we are supposed to end at, at 16 hours uh, but we have been told that if we exceed 16 hours then that won't be live on on the parliamentary channel so we'll continue i want to hand over to minister dg and the team to respond to the number of questions comments and, and queries that have been raised by the members before the end, we release the NCOP members to go to the committee that is starting at four. Can the department come on uh, as led by the minister? I know that she's back now. Minister? Good, good afternoon, Chairperson and honorable members and Chairperson of the NCOP. Yes, I was off for a few minutes in, in the beginning. Uh, but, you know, that's technology. Let me first uh, say to all members, I hope that you are all safe and you are all healthy. Uh, this is the first for our country. And um, we are doing things like the rest of the world. We're trying to fight the scourge of this virus. And under very difficult circumstances. Chairperson, I will allow the DG and the team to respond to most of the questions. Um, there are only two that I would like to respond to. Uh, yes, I did write a letter to the Auditor General on the 20th of April. Um, after there were a lot of uh, issues raised or queries raised from the public, and for the sake of transparency and accountability, I asked the AG. Uh, to, to investigate the matter. The AG has come back to me on the 30th of April to confirm um, that it might take a bit longer because of the lockdown period, but the AG will certainly in, investigate whether we got value for money and uh, um, whether due processes were followed. So I can confirm that. Um, the next one... Um, about the time in the quarantine sites, uh, honorable chairpersons, uh, it's not the PWI that decide on how many days people must stay and when they can leave. Uh, that question must be put to the Department of Health. In terms of the regulations of the Disaster Risk Management Act, it is the role and function of DPWI to identify buildings for quarantine sites and that's what we have done. So we are not dealing with the actual period of how long people must 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 stay there. Uh, then also the, the last one about um, the list of um, of all the facilities. Again, uh, it has been requested by the department. Uh, there is a master list that we have compiled. Uh, and up to today, we've identified over 1,300 sites. Uh, there are currently about 215 sites that are ready for to be activated, um, uh, where uh, over over 5,000 beds. And and the procedure is that the Department of Health um, will request us to uh, activate a facility based on the numbers that are coming in. We're still struggling a bit with the protocol of how this needs to be done. 
like we only received a request this morning, a chairperson, for a flight that landed from Ethiopia at 10, but we got the request at 9.30. There was another uh, a flight that landed at, at uh, 10.30, and they also requested us in half an hour before the time. But we are working out the pro protocols with DERPO uh, and also the Department of Health. And so the master list of where these facilities are that the health department has inspected and has approved to be used for quarantine sites. At the request of the Minister of, of, of Health, um, he felt that, you know, the, the actual location of the sites um, not to, to be published uh, because of, um, you know, we want, we want people to, to have their privacy there. But I hear what honourable members are saying that you want to carry out your oversight duties, um, and certainly I can take it up with the the, the minister of of health. Then, lastly, uh, concerning the issue of of of, of Baybridge, um, we are going to ask. I mean, we have asked the auditor general to investigate. But I think also our Deputy Director General will give you a breakdown on what we have spent so far on the projected amount. Uh, so uh, it is not correct to say that we built the spends for 37 million while um, the, uh, uh, the, we've not received the final and actual. But the, the DG and the DDG will, will respond to that. Uh, I think that's all that I think I will answer. Um, just on, on, on the EPW, in, on the EPWP on slide three, uh, it says that um, I have issued a directive for 25,000 uh, EPWP workers for quarantine sites, uh, honorable chairperson. The request for 25,000 EPWP persons or workers was broken down into 10,000 for screening, uh, another 10,000 for advocacy um, uh, in the communities, and then the 5,000 for, um, for quarantine sites. What has subsequently happened as the need uh, arises all the time the Department of Health had requested that we, we make 5,000 available for screening. So now we've got 15,000 available that, for screening uh, because we need to screen a lot more people across the country. And it's all work in progress. And uh, thank you for the opportunity, Chairperson, to, to bring some clarity on some of the issues. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, Sorry, DG, my, my apology, yeah. Chairperson. There was just a question from Honorable Lond. Um, I don't know what properties he's referring to. Where can you be more, more specific? Uh, who requested the properties and what was the use meant for the properties? Because we are discussing quarantine side. So he was specific if he can either write to me or uh, ask me now exactly what what these properties was meant for. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Minister, Deputy Minister and colleagues, and Honorable Members. Uh, we are going to respond to questions as raised, uh, those which Minister didn't touch. The issue of for uh, the amount paid to employees, participants, EPW participants. The amount as determined by the Minister of uh, Employment and Labor, it goes uh, to the pockets of the participants. We also ensure that we monitor whether the money goes to the participants. The national database on quarantine size, Minister has covered that. We do have that. Our wish is that we could be using only public 
facilities. That's our wish. However, because it's a multidisciplinary approach, this one, we work with other departments. The Department of Health is the one that does the assessment. And when they assess a lot of houses that uh, public works uh, have made available, they have said it will be costly, costly for them to utilize houses in particular. The reason being that uh, in each quarantine site, they have to put uh, in place a health professional, an administrator, and a security official who comes normally from the from the subs. So the advice we got from them is that in the meantime they are not going to approve houses that have been provided by public works. However, we're still working on the state facilities in uh, many respects to ensure that we utilize them. The breakdown of costs uh, with respect to the fence, it will be done. The DDGs, I think, is going to do that. The list of NPOs will make them available. I call it DDG, PWP will do that. And then uh, there was also a question with respect to the issue of compliance with the triple B EE is something that uh, we also take into consideration. The 14 day period of quarantine site is also determined by the Department of Health, not us. We rely a lot here from the Department of Health. The issue of this Zitabiseni in Pumalanga. We didn't acquire this site. It was acquired by the provincial department in Pumalanga. However, there is a, a contrary view that was issued by the department in this regard because assessment is done by the Department of Health. So this one is a matter that the uh, Department of Health is still pursuing to clarify as to what really happened. Uh, the budget for quarantine site, we didn't have budget. There's no budget for this. The process is that why we delayed a bit. We engaged the National Treasury with respect to, because it is the responsibility of the Department of Health to pay for this. And Health didn't have money because no one could have actually planned for this. However, we have engaged in the National Department, the uh, National Treasury, who indicated that we should proceed with uh, the payments and then during the adjustment, adjustment uh, processes of budget, they will actually ensure that they reimburse us. And then uh, there's a question also which says who pays what has been done. Yes, we are responsible for the payment now because we've taken responsibility in the light of the fact that the regulation, the disaster management uh, regulation provide the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure the responsibility of making available quarantine sites and isolation sites. The release of people in quarantine site were not uh, involved in this. As I indicated, in each quarantine site, the Department of Health puts a health practitioner, an administrator, and subs also com comes on board with respect to putting a security official. We are still wanting to know also in those uh, specific as to what may have happened. It's a matter that we can make follow-ups also with our counterparts. Uh, there was a question relating to companies that do not comply. I think they should be reported. Companies that do not uh, comply with the disaster regulation, they just have to be reported because they're infringing the, the rights of people, workers in particular. They can report to the Department of Labor 
they should be reported. It's not uh, this one was a general question relating to to companies, not necessarily relating to public works. The training to EPW. P officials, yes, it's a training that is provided by the Department of Health with respect to what uh, they are expected to do. The delay that we may have taken is that this is an unusual uh, deployment of for EPWP participants because of uh, the nature of the work that the Department of Health is doing. It is for this reason that health Practitioners are the ones that are going to uh, ensure that these officials are trained, and then they, we have actually procured also the PPEs for these uh, officials. The criteria for the identification of, of NPOs, my colleagues also going to add on this one. We have got a database of NPOs who normally are utilized from a time to time, we build up a, a database of for NPOs, but we can make them available as we have indicated. Uh, the issue of the border fence, why was it identified by the Department of Defense? We are the service provider for the client's department. Defense is a client. Yes, I'm aware that we're supposed to do maintenance and monitor on a regular basis. However, the usage is in the client. The defense is a client. Defense is the one that does the patrolling of the border. And defense is the one that make, must make us avail, aware with respect to the state of defense. The issue of borders is a, it's a well-known fact that uh, it's a matter that requires attention. As you may have heard in the presentation by the DDG, he indicated that there's a plan for the entire border management control, working with the border management authority and the Department of Defense and other departments. There's a plan which requires to be funded. It's a process that we're looking at it, which we'll actually share with the honorable members. Uh, there's also the Current hand side comes again with respect to the amounts that we're paying to the to the private vis-a-vis -vis that which belong to the state. Yes, I must say that uh, when we got involved in this, there was more reliant on the private because they are readily available. But we want to emphasize that uh, the public also should get into the picture because we need to cut on the costs in this regard. There was also a question relating to the payment in advance. Uh, the presenter indicated that there was an agreement entered into between the Department of Tourism and National Treasury. In that agreement, the payment in advance was uh, included in their argument when we engage them they indicate that uh, for them to reactivate the, the hotels because they were closed they are required to mobilize the resources in terms of employees for purpose of also food which will be provided for those who will be quarantined on this one we we'll also check the legal the legality and then uh, based on reasons that have been advanced is something that can be done within the, the issue of uh, paying for the whole hotel whilst we are not using it it also came into the picture it's part and parcel of the agreement we have written to national treasury to clarify when we engage them also on this one they say it will not make business sense for them to open only for few people to be quarantined. Let's say, for instance, we request uh, 50 people to be quarantined whilst the hotel can accommodate 50 or 150. They said uh, it will not make business sense for them to open for only those. So the agreement that was entered into was that 
when we request a quarantine, we should actually book for the whole. But we are seeking clarity as to whether when we do so, we'll be operating within the law. That's what we're doing now currently. We may be receiving a, a response today. If the response is positive, I, I should think it's something that we should do. We should consider. And then uh, there was another question which uh, I should think I've covered. There may be areas which I have not covered, but I'll request my colleagues, starting from Morris and then uh, uh, Devon and then Vatu. They will add into areas which uh, I may have not covered. Colleagues? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll only be focusing on um, questions that uh, were raised around uh, quarantine, which may be possible the minister as well as the DG uh, couldn't uh, maybe, yeah, couldn't address. I guess the first one would be the question around the breakdown for Western Cape and, and possibly the entire country in terms of state-owned and all that. I think the minister has already indicated that we've got that database. It's just a matter of just, uh, uh, because these figures, they change daily in terms of what has been assessed, what has been activated as flights come through from various countries. Now we'll actually have to update this. Uh, we've got a version five that is uh, given to us this morning by PICC. We'll be able to, to do that breakdown and provide the members uh, with, the, with the breakdown. And then there was also a question around the sharing of uh, rooms. Is it allowed? Um, I think that one is in the terrain of um, Department of Health to respond to. But we have had situations whereby um, a parent would come with a child that is few months old. And then that would be such kind of cases or just a child. And then where they would actually require uh, them to be in the, in the same space. Um, the other one was around the issue of uh, schools. Why didn't we explore university residences, boarding schools, as well as, um, yeah, I think boarding schools to invest money in terms of beds and then which will be usable again uh, post COVID-19. We try to look at this, uh, but we're discouraged uh, from uh, exploring this one further um, because the Minister of uh, Basic Education also, as uh, they were concerned that um, there were still issues around when would the schools be opening? And then that would actually disrupt the entire program of quarantining uh, people, and then they have to be moved on all that. And the issue of education is still uh, something that we're still um, being discussed at not joint. I guess there will be further presentations on that uh, later uh, on. Um, there's so a question why so long, why it took us so long in terms of the SOP and protocol document. Um, I, the issue is uh, because we are not one department, we are quite a number of departments. Protocol document will not only involve public works, it will also involve a department of transport because they've got a role to play. Uh, it also involves a department of health, it also uh, in one way or the other, to, uh, involves uh, South African police services in terms of the security uh, services that they provide in various facilities that which have been converted to be uh, quarantine centers. Therefore, that protocol document is is important in that in that case because four ministers they've actually requested, uh, including our minister, in that meeting to say that we really need to have. Uh, this one uh, concluded as a matter of urgency, so that we can have a bad eyes view of the responsibility of all the departments uh, in terms of um, um, the document itself. And then SOP, um, yes, indeed, we took a little bit long because we thought that the secular 
where that which was signed already, which was in existence, as signed by the by the DG, would uh, suffice. But we realized after we have been called uh, by the minister to say that maybe we need to expand it further so that we can have a detailed kind of activities that which uh, would be um, would be outlined as to whose role is to do what. And then that uh, expansiated uh, kind of a document, which is an SOP, is the one now that which we are we are we are we are finalizing, and is almost ready to be concluded. Thanks, Chair. Any other responses? Devin. Thank you, DG, Chairperson and uh, members, uh, Minister DM. Just very quickly, I think there's four issues that have not been touched. The first was speaking to UIF and TERS and the duration of cover. Um, the the TERS covers EPWP participants during the lockdown period uh, while they're, as long as they have a valid contract. But post the contract expiry, normal UIF benefits then kick in. Uh, as, as we're all aware, uh, EPWP participants contribute to UIF and the moment their project contract, et cetera, ends, EPWP participants are entitled to those benefits. So, so they'll be covered either through TERS or through UIF if the project comes to an end. TERS, though, they have to be in, in a valid contract currently. The next issue was on the uh, list of NPOs and, and how many were contracted. Did you touch on that? We'll make that available. The point uh, that was also raised was the lack of clear timelines and the difficulty we're sitting with as Department of Public Works is uh, we're waiting for a deployment plan from the Department of Health. And as soon as that deployment plan comes in, then all of the other timelines fits in such as training, when they start to, when they start to uh, actually uh, undertake the various activities, et cetera. So up to now, it's just, it's just that the, the Recruitment is is ninety percent done. Uh, on the issue of uh, why we don't use the employment register, uh, as I mentioned, this program started uh, some ten years ago. Uh, it's been run with its own recruitment process, targeting of NPOs, targeting of participants. It's implemented through IDT. So every two years, IDT contracts with a with a group of NPOs, and the last contract was entered into was in the last financial year. This is the last year of those existing NPOs. So we had to use those NPOs that were on the IDT database. There were 334 or so NPOs on the IDT, IDT database. But because we were contracting right now for the COVID-19, we were required to ensure that all of those 34 NPOs that are on the IDT contract are fully compliant with CSD. And in, and in doing that verification, we found out there was only 191 that are verified. So that's the 191 that we were currently targeting to contract. And uh, the last point spoke to the, oh, that was also speaking to the criteria for, for the NPOs. So I've, I've touched on that as well. Thank you. Um, but you can come in before minister comes in. Thank you, Honourable Chair, uh, Honourable Members, Honourable uh, Minister, Honourable DM and DG. I will just focus on uh, specific uh, questions that were not addressed. There are only a few. There was a question on the quality inspection. Um, on a daily basis, uh, there is a, a, an inspection book which is on site, which was uh, signed off as work was uh, progressing and also on a weekly basis there were site uh, meetings which were contractual and all issues relating to quality were captured in the minutes if there were any and then they were addressed uh, uh, accordingly. There was a, a question raised around why are we calling this uh, fence COVID uh, fence um, I would just want to uh, indicate that it, it's just uh, an expression um, and uh, it, it, uh, it's a normal fence. Uh, the, the wedding of COVID-19 was just put there 
to to highlight the project uh, that it was of a, an emergency nature due to the circumstances that we find ourselves uh, in. The question that was raised around uh, the specifics in the BOQ, uh, around the removal of the fence and so forth. Um, yeah, that item, if we uh, look at the, the BOQ, the, it talks about an activity of supplying, erecting, and uh, uh, removing any old uh, damaged uh, fence. So the contractor was instructed to use any material that is deemed uh, suitable for, for reuse. Uh, and then uh, the material that was not suitable for, for reuse will then be uh, removed. Um, and uh, that's exactly what was done. There was also a follow-up question in relation to the BOQs around uh, security and um, uh, cost and so forth. And what uh, we are saying is that it's a contractor's responsibility uh, to ensure that his um, fence is secure during construction. Um, he, the contractor is aware of the environment because he's, he's been doing maintenance work there. And um, uh, as a department, we you know the rates that are there uh, are, are scheduled rates, and that's where we end. Um, we are, we don't feel that he was prejudiced in, in any way. Um, there was a, another uh, uh, question uh, raised around the visiting of, of the site, and I think uh, we, we would uh, welcome uh, the suggestion. And I'll also request uh, that when we get to site, we do a presentation of uh, the work that we are planning on, on doing in future. And then uh, uh, so members can also have that uh, in mind while they are doing the, the inspections. Lastly, uh, the issue raised around uh, the final account, it's correct that uh, the tender sum was 37 um, a million. And we are finalizing the final accounts due uh, in less than 14 days. And then uh, we will then communicate once that final account is, is signed off. Because to date, uh, 21 million uh, has been uh, paid. But um, uh, at final account, we'll then communicate to honorable members accordingly through the uh, uh, governance structures that are in place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. The last part, I think the Minister wants to say something, but I want to say we have also reported the matter of the taking care of the fence patrolling to the net joints. The matter was received uh, and to the extent that they also take the responsibility to ensure that they patrol the area because fence alone might not uh, be the solution. Thanks very much. Minister, want to say something? Yes, a chairperson, in, in conclusion, um, I just want to say that part of the quarantine sites, which is not part of our report, um, we started with the allocation of quarantine sites on the 12th of April. Before that, um, the T Tourism Council made available 30 million rand and then the Tourism Council then contracted directly uh, with the hotels, uh, which, which of course are their members. So we, uh, I, I don't have a report on what transpired between the tourism company and, and the private hotels. Just lastly, uh, Chairperson, on, on the fence. What must be condemned in the strongest possible terms is the criminality and the crime that's taking place on our borders. The crooks are always one ahead of us. And when we were asked to repair and replace the fence, it was specifically at what they call hotspots. The fence was hardly up for one day and the crooks came through with cases of cigarettes, 
and smuggling food and all of that. And therefore, I wrote a letter to the Minister of Defence on the 4th of April, asking the Minister to please get uh, the SANDF to patrol uh, the fence uh, regularly. But even that chairperson is not helping because they're watching them. The SANDF is there on bikes, uh, they drive up there. The crooks just know where and when, when to strike. So it is a big problem at our borders, which we need to address going into the future to make sure that all the borders facing uh, all the other countries that we need to need to help from other countries too to secure our borders in South Africa. But thank you for the opportunity and any other information we will send to the chairperson soon. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Richie and, 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 and Chief. Um, we will allow the members uh, for follow up. Um, but members, it's only one minute. So remember, we have already exceeded uh, the time that was set for the meeting. So it will only be one minute for each member to 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 speak. Um, uh, you will follow get this. Uh, it's Honorable Franz Kaden, uh, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Graham, Honorable Chagu, Honorable Mumalo, then the last one is Honorable Franz Calvi. One minute each, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, I'm timing you, I will be using this stopwatch because at least we have to be out of this meeting by 22. Uh, Chair, I didn't hear you mention my name, Honorable Tring. Oh, you didn't indicate. Okay, Honorable Tring after Honorable Franz Kalvik. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah. Honorable Franz Stadion, you are the first one, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Minister, for your response. I think on the border fence line, I think we have no choice but to see that um, um, you must, I think, rather speak to the Minister of Defence or Police to see that adequate patrolling is enforced onto that border fence line to see that it don't get damaged again and uh, um, that our property gets stolen again. On the other matters, Madam Chairperson, I just want to emphasize that we clearly have a, it seems like they did, that the buck is being passed from one department to the other department regarding these quarantine facilities. And I would like to ask the Minister to please go urgently into talks with the Minister of Health about these problems we have, we are currently occurring and we can, and that we can come to a resolution for this problem we are seeing now in the media. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mine will be on the plant and site workers, where I see that there is no women empowerment. Out of all the number of people that have been hired, only one woman was hired. The rest of the list is only men. I need to find out why that happened. And then another thing, what guarantee do we have that the asset register pertaining all assets and the sites of the state are actually properties of public works and that public works is not going to be faced with paying for places that don't belong to public works because the AGES report said that the asset register is not up to standard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Ryan. Thank you, Chair. Just on the EPWP questions, um, what happens if people have been recruited and there's no place for them to work? Because at this stage, we don't have confirmed deployment and implementation sites. Also, we're paying 101 Rand per day per participant. This has been clarified, but the NPOs are being required to provide hand sanitizer and also to provide facilities where people can be assessed. What um, what costs are being covered on, on behalf of those NPOs? Are there additional costs that they can claim? Um, and then just um, finally, again, just on the fence, um, is there, 
this is definitely a temporary site. The fence is going to be removed. Four kilometers have already been removed. I've seen pictures of that. Will we look at doing a proper fencing strategy going forward with all the relevant departments to ensure that we do proper border control and that this, this money isn't entirely wasted? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Chwaku. Honorable Chwaku. Yes, I'm here, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Very quickly, number one, Minister, when are we going to get all these uh, information, um, the, the list of the sites, details of the sites, the list of the NPOs, all this information that we need? Number two, in the slides, ne, there was something called movable assets, and it was quite a lot of money. What are those movable assets? Are those beds or something? And then... <clears throat> uh, can we please work with the Department of Health to allocate the, the sites ne, for the homeless? Because the homeless in Cape Town and in Swan, they've been given tents and it's inhumane. So can you please work with him, with him or her, uh, so with, with actually him, so that you are able to, 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 to get those, those people to, 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 to be on, on, the, on the sites? And then um, is it possible to increase, can, we, can, can I lobby you, Chair? We increase uh, this NPO, the, the money of this EPWP, from 101 to at least 200 rands. Because it is COVID, people are hungry. They us actually put more money. And then um, the, the, the last one is, can we please get the, the drawings? Uh, can I really request the, the drawings of the fence, on the issue of the fence, the drawings and the BOQ? submitted. So can you get in terms when are we going to get all this information? Thank you very much. Mine short and simple. Uh, honorable members, uh, sincere apologies. Uh, the, the ICT people from the parliament are saying that other committees can't continue because we're continuing. So those that have sincere apologies, uh, I won't allow you to speak. Uh, even the minister and the DG, if we want the responses that have been and I think the chair is having for responses yeah. before. Take it, Nola. Minister and DG, that the committee has raised chapel and that we are. Uh, I want you to look. The, the safety. All right. Um, I think the chairperson has has experienced problems in terms of network. What what she was basically trying to explain that was there that were any are you back now? of the PFMA. You, you can hear. I'm, I'm, hello. I'm speaking. Uh, we lost you, chair. But, uh, okay. Uh, I think Nola. Uh, can we? Adjourn the meeting. Can we adjourn the meeting? Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, honorable yeah, members. Yeah. Thank you, we'll, Mr. We'll, we'll, we'll write. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Hi. Hi. I'm saying that I was also. Ooh. Nola? Nola? Yes, Chair. Uh, we have a serious challenge here. Uh, where is Faith? Has she gone? Should I call her? No, she's here, Chair. Faith, she's okay. online. Faith, Faith from Communications. She's online, Chair. She's on the meeting.
answer questions. Like that's to indicate 